And we've been talking about it. We've tweeted about it. It's not just the Arizona Republic talking about it. It's ABC 15. It's everybody in Arizona is talking about how the legislature has adjourned, how they've declared a uh, sine die, which is Latin for without days. And I can't remember who it was on the House. Actually, I do, but I'm not going to embarrass them. They said sign die, sine die means without days. It means it's the end of the session. And this is this is terrible because here we're at this critical juncture in our history where the governors and the mayors, you've talked about the LA model, where the mayors are declaring emergencies so that way they can act as the entire city council by themselves without any checks or balances. They are letting the, the city councils and our legislatures are letting the, our governors and our mayors roll all over us and make all of the rules. And then we're going to court. And if the court says that it's constitutional, well, that's okay. I had kind of a cryptic tweet over the over the weekend. You know, just because something is constitutional doesn't mean it's not a dumb idea. It may be perfectly allowable to have these bad policies in place, but it doesn't make it a good idea. And the legislature is where we're supposed to be making policy. And what is the Arizona legislature doing? What is Karen Fan, the Senate leader? in Arizona doing, going on vacation at the one time when we actually need our politicians. Normally they're useless. Normally it doesn't matter if they're only in session for a month or two a year because they can get all their business done. But right now we have an ongoing crisis and her response is, we will declare a special session if we need to. But but guess who gets to call a special session? Do you know? I do not. It's the governor. So if they want to hold the governor accountable, they need the governor's permission. It is absolutely topsy-turvy. So the, the Arizona Republic's take on this, as you can imagine, is just the coldest of takes. They, they their, their first big point is, well, the economy is doing terrible. That means that Arizona doesn't, meaning the Arizona government, doesn't have a lot of money. And so all these bills are going to be dead on arrival because they all cost money. It didn't even occur to them in their coverage that maybe they should be cutting spending because they don't have the money. It, it didn't even occur to them that they, that they would be passing bills in order to be more cost conscious. Just the opposite. Uh, they, the, the next argument was, well, you can't do committee work because you can't get into the committee rooms. <laughs> well, what are we doing right now? We're, we're talking over uh, the internet. We're on Facebook and YouTube, and you can listen to us on anchor.fm if you know get any podcast service you want to listen to us. There are ways to do this, and maybe we should have been doing this all along, telecommuting, get, letting our legislators telecommute. So that's a, that's a non-starter. That doesn't make any sense, but it's like no imagination whatsoever. And she's, and, and it goes on, this woman, Joanne, I know some lawmakers want to punish the governor for issuing his stay-at-home order. They fear that if they end the legislative session, they won't be able to smack him down, particularly if he issues another. He shouldn't be allowed to issue emergency orders while the legislature is in session. He shouldn't be allowed. You know, they've had time to respond. They've had time to think about it and think about what they want the policy to be. Why is the governor, why do we assume that the governor should be unilaterally making this policy? And why is it a partisan thing? Why is it just Republicans? Why are both parties furious that the governor is doing their job and they're not allowed to? So I, I find it, you know, absolutely in, infuriating. And, and and just to to to, to cap this off, because we're you know we had a long session with Jacob, but it was it was really good. But we don't want to hold everybody too long. Lawmakers can queue up a list of bills that didn't pass this session, but are ready to go first thing in 2021. And committee chairs would be asked to give them priority in January. So we're, we're going to wait for January for the legislature, which is a part time legislature, to do their jobs. What do you what do you think about that, Eric? It's, it's just ridiculous. You know, we, we've, we've talked about that, and it, it also kind of relates to the, the main topic that we had at the top of top of the hour here with, uh, you know, what, what Amash is saying about, you know, legislatures have a job to do, and they're not doing it. And we've seen this in the federal government for so long. Now we're really seeing it in our state legislatures as well. 
And it, it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy the way that legislatures are just totally acquiescing to the executive branch in, in every single state. And this is, this is a bipartisan issue where basically they are all folding and basically saying, we're just going right. to do whatever the governor says. Um, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing, especially after this amount of time. There's no excuse for the legislature not acting and doing something. Right. The legislature could enact a law and they could actually put a, a date on it. They could say, OK, yeah. we're going to extend uh, this, you know, the, the governor's order until this time or we're going to end it. The legislature has that ability. Uh, no, no executive has the ability to make these executive orders or, or emergency declarations, uh, you know, unending. They, they can't do that. They don't have that kind of authority, especially once the legislature decides, well, we're going to do that, go do it this way or do it that way. Because, you know, I've talked about this before. Executive orders have the effect of, of law. They, they are laws de facto. They may not be laws de jour because right. they are not technically laws, but, but they have the force of law, especially right. the way that these, these executive orders are written uh, because they, they always have an enforcement mechanism right? right. because the, 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 the most governors do have a, an apparatus to declare emergencies and do things like force evacuations and things like that. That's what those laws are for, right? That's exactly what those laws are for. Right. So and the, the way there, that there is governor, a criminal penalty to that. So yeah, and the way that Governor Ducey's been able to speak out of both sides of his mouth on this issue is he's saying, "Well, I'm not imposing the penalty, or I'm not enforcing this. It's just a suggestion," which isn't true. We've gone through the language, but in many cases, it's your county health inspector who is going to be enforcing it, and then calling the sheriff to come arrest you. So the sheriff has clean hands. Hey. We're not cracking down on, on businesses. We're just responding to the health inspector and the governor. Well, I'm not doing anything. And, and yeah, that's but it, it's all nonsense. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's, it's not as if he's directly ordering the state police necessarily to do these things. He's, he's putting these orders out and then he's leaving it on to individual sheriffs, you know, police chiefs, mayors to decide how to enforce these things, uh, which just creates a big mess. Right. And, you know, I, I will give uh, Arizona Republicans some credit here. We've seen a lot of pushback against Governor Ducey's order, uh, which is the right thing to do, because you don't have a republic if you have one man acting unilaterally. We can call it a dictatorship or a tyranny or an empire, or whatever you want to call it. But this is what happened with Rome. And I, I don't want to be too dramatic here because we always people always compare the United States to Rome. But one of the things that happened with the Roman Empire was that the Senate became less and less important because they still met and they still voted, but they were basically just a debating society. They just advised the emperor and really couldn't bind him anymore. And and that's where we are with, with Congress and that's where we are with our state legislatures in, in many cases. That's a good analogy, unfortunately. It really is because the, the, the you know, the, the Roman Republic, you know, it was a republic. That's how they started out. Um, and, of course, it became an empire. And uh, quite frankly, a lot of people think we're on the same road. So. Yeah. In many ways, we're already already there.